What is up everyone and welcome to a random little quick video um, that I'm just going to film. I was just fiddling about with this on the floor and I thought, you know what, I've charged my camera battery um, ready for a moment like this and I think I'm going to share with you guys what I'm doing. So, um, right here in front of me I have my N64 and I have my future living room TV. If you have not seen the video about this TV, um, then search for it on the channel. This is a 40 inch 720p Samsung TV from around the year 2008. It's uh, a very very nice model, I had it for free from a friend which I'm very grateful for and I'm really looking forward to using it because it's 8 inches bigger than our existing TV. Um, but what I've been doing recently is doing a lot of planning and trying to gather together all of the cables and stuff that I'm going to need for the living room setup. Now something pretty confusing about our setup is the fact that I'm trying to implement so many different uh, consoles and devices from all sorts of different eras ranging from um, 1980 all the way up to you know the present day and uh, getting it all connected and getting the best picture quality out of every single device is proving to be a bit challenging. Now this particular little video is all about the Nintendo 64. As you guys know I recently filmed a video about, about uh, Cruising USA just to test out my new purchase. My purchase was one of these. This is a Nintendo AV multi cable on one side and on the other side we have a standard AV breakout but also an S video cable. Now this cable I now know and I pretty much knew straight away when using it. This is the wrong cable for an N64. Now there will be examples in this video, don't worry I'm not just talking. Um, this is the wrong cable to use with an N64. It will be fine with an NTSC console or a Japanese console but um, for the PAL N64 this cable is um, compatible but incorrect. What it basically does is produces a picture that is much too bright and sort of over exposed I guess you could call it. The picture is overexposed. You still get a quality improvement in terms of pixel to pixel quality over um, composite but it's an awful awful look. Great for the GameCube though. So I can use these cables for my GameCube and also, I'll, I, I ordered two of these by the way guys, I can use this cable, cable for a little surprise. I've spent my Christmas money on uh, importing a little surprise that I can't wait to show you guys. But if anyone is curious, this is the cable that I'm referring to and there are all sorts of them on eBay. Um, it's basically, it's actually quite a nice cable because it's one piece, it's a really, it's a nice feeling cable for the price. Um, just under a fiver, well just over four quid really, they've sold a load and I bet there are a few people out there or quite a lot of these people that have bought it for the Nintendo 64 that are using it completely oblivious to the fact that their picture is actually now worse in a way than it was with the standard composite or um, coaxial RF or whatever. So. In the description, it says that it's a replacement for a standard AV cable. Nowhere, it doesn't. Com it doesn't claim to be the um, the S video cable of choice for a PAL N64. So I'm not interested in uh, leaving negative feedback or anything like that because this thing is as advertised. It mentions N64, and yes, technically it does work with the N64. So. Um, after buying those cables, this is what I used to record the Cruising USA video by the way, that's why it's all washed out and that is with decreased brightness in post-production. Let's move that over there, we'll take another look at it in a second. After uh, looking at that, I then ordered two of these. Now, this cable is actually not as nice, but if you look at the cable here, you can see that it is four separate cables. There is the uh, AV multi-end. And here is the S-Video along with the AV jacks. Now this is the true, correctly wired cable for a PAL N64. Believe it or not, the whole reasoning behind this is because the PAL N64 doesn't have... Um, I think it's something to do with the resistance of the output and the wiring or whatever, I'm not too sure. Um, I have read about it but it's not something that's sort of retained in my brain. Um, but this, like I said, would be fine for other consoles um, like the GameCube and it would be fine on the NTSC consoles but for a PAL console you need the one with the dedicated uh, wired directly um, S-Video cable. So to get that cable I had to go over to, what is this website called? This website is called consolegoods.co.uk 
and I had to email Robert directly in order to get the cable. Just a quick um, clip that I'm putting in while editing this video guys, I noticed that I showed the wrong cable while initially filming this. Um, so. To say what I was going to say, this is the cable that I got off console goods. This is the N64 S Video and AV cable PAL version for a £7.90. This cable has both S Video connection and AV composite video connections. The AV and S Video circuits are separate, unlike some cheaply made cables where composite and S Video share a wire in the cable. Both the S Video and composite AV circuits are wired specially for uh, use with PAL UK Euro Australia version N64 consoles, so it does not produce an overbright picture when used with a PAL console. So this is the correct um, a special edition coloured and Pokemon PAL N64 don't seem to output S video. This is interesting. I'll have to check my blue console. I've just just noticed that. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, that's just sorry. This video is a bit disjointed, but I, I initially showed the wrong cable. So yeah, this is the one. I got two of them. One of them is here. One will be for my living room setup. The other will be for my office setup N64. And uh, so far, so good. But I have run into another little. Um, what could I call this? Variable in my scenario, I guess. Now, because of the amount of uh, consoles and stuff that I want to run on my setup, it's not a crazy, crazy amount, but because of the amount, I've pretty much declared the S video port, the native S video port, on the back of this TV or on the side of this TV, rather. I've declared it as something that I'm not going to use because I want at least four things going in via S video, or maybe three things, I can't remember off the top of my head. I do have it all written down. Um, and S video switches are pretty much non existent, especially in this country. So that's when I decided to move over to taking a little look at, hang on, let me grab it. Our old friend, something that I've had bad dealings with, but I've now educated myself a lot better in this particular um, cable, or this particular interface rather, and that is SCART. Now I've spoken about SCART in the front, that's S-C-A-R-T. Um, you don't have it in many regions, apparently, I never knew this, this is pretty much ju just a French UK and some other European places I believe and maybe Australia not too sure on that one but to the US this connector is pretty much totally foreign I believe um, but this connection is capable of full RGB standard definition video so when you have all of the pins filled out like this uh, as they are in the adapter this connection, like I just said, is capable of some of the best standard definition video quality that you can get on a consumer grade platform, such as consumer televisions. Um, so, on the other side of this, and these are commonplace in this country, are composite to SCART adapters. Reason being is because not every TV comes with composite inputs. Um, they come with SCART inputs often and not composite, sometimes vice versa, but they've normally always got SCART on them, apart from these days, if they're, you know, pure HD, they, they, they've just got HDMI, but roll back a few years ago, you often had SCART. Now, you'd have one of these, it would come with your console, but it wouldn't have S-Video on it. So I went out of my way to find SCART adapters that supported S-Video. So, SCART adapter that um, has the full set of pins, a nice quality, uh, it's reversible if I ever needed that, and also uh, it's got S-Video so I can get the best quality into it from my consoles. Now I wanted to use this in conjunction with this, which is the proper S-Video cable for the N64, in conjunction with, hang on a second guys, one of these. This may look like an ordinary SCART cable, but it is not. It is certified for full RGB use, and um, this cost me about a fiver. I have two of them, so there's that. And, hang on a second, one of these, a lot of you may have seen uh, these um, because there's so many different sort of makes and variations of this. They do make horrible cheap versions of this, but this switch is fully RGB compatible. That is guaranteed. I went on a special forum and made sure this switch is pretty much... Um, not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's pretty much the dog's nuts of SCART switches for the best value. These are about £30 each. So this, with this going into it, S-Video, um, I can get three consoles in there going out. I've got two SCART connections. I've got two splitters. Happy days. Um, but unfortunately, I've hit a bit of a snag with the SCART. And it's something that I'm going to have to experiment with more in the future. But 
I've just got a bit ahead of myself there, folks. Let's roll back slightly. Um, first, what I'm going to do is show you guys the N64 outputting in standard... Um, Sorry, not in standard. The S the N64 outputting in S video from the eBay cable, the normal AV eBay cable, and I'm going to show you the picture. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera. Um, I don't actually have my capture card at the moment. I'm lending it to a friend, so um, I can't capture directly to show you guys the sort of saturation difference, or not the saturation, it's more the exposure. But this is the eBay cable, um, and let's jump into a game really quickly and we're going to take a look at this picture now firstly because it's s video i'm going to zoom in and if you just take a look at the number four you can see that every pixel is at least true to itself now if you use composite um because of the nature of composite we all know how composite works um, every pixel bleeds into the next there's no definition between the pixels and if you look at for example, a 16-bit era game from the Mega Drive or the Super Nintendo, the difference between composite and S-Video is absolutely colossal because when the S-Video um, improvements um, occur, they really lend themselves to those early graphics that are very pixelated anyway. But the N64 is actually quite an odd um, system to judge in this kind of scenario simply because it's wanna be kind of it's really dated graphics by now and the console is just so unusual in the way that it looks um, especially by today's standards so yeah it's kind of difficult to tell what is right and wrong with the N64 but this picture is certainly not right now I'm gonna swap to the uh, the other cable and you guys will be able to hopefully notice a big difference now we're using the different cable and I believe my camera is set to the same settings which is um, always good um, it's all, all on full auto but I think it's coping quite well with the change in picture as you guys can see I'm using the dedicated uh, cable the proper cable from this website and that is what the picture is looking like now I give my camera two seconds and I really really hope it's coming out on screen um, I'm just going to jump back into the game because when you're in the game that's when you can really see it as well now, if you look, there we go. The ground beneath my feet, and yeah, the camera is not doing this justice at all, guys. Um, but the ground beneath my feet, the sort of sand, is much more yellow. The sky has a lot more blue in it. Um, the blue was very whitish blue before, and every colour just looks nicer. I really hope you can see the difference on camera, but if you can't, just take my word for it. And in true S-Video style, uh, if you look at the four, Every pixel is true to itself, no bleed. So very, very nice, great, great looking image. At this particular point in the test, I was very, very pleased. However, I will not be connecting my console like this because like I said, I wanna use SCART splitters. By the way, the camera is now coping a little better with it. You can definitely see it there. Like I was saying, I wanted to use SCART splitters to implement a, um, uh, multiple console setup. Now what I'm going to do guys is plug the S video into here on this adapter and plug this into the SCART connection on the back of the TV and we're going to take a look at how it looks and I'm going to talk you through the difference in picture. In my opinion, considering that this is a better interface than S video, in theory there should be no problems with using this whatsoever. It should give me a picture that is equally as good. Obviously not better because it's the same source, same cable, but it should be equally as good. I should not be able to visibly see a difference. Um, but yeah, take a look at this, it speaks for itself. Now ignore the fact that it's 16 by nine, that's a settings difference in my TV. You should be able to notice the difference straight away. Now if we go up to the four and take a look, you guys can see a horrendous, horrendous, um, moving rainbow effect. Awful, awful stability issue. Now, every pixel is still true to itself. It doesn't look like composite, but it now the entire picture, if you look here, you can see rainbow hue, rainbow hue, and even on Mario himself, flickering rainbow hue is over the entire picture as like a canvas. It's as if someone has layered a strange video effect on the entire thing. But this is where it gets even stranger. I'm now going to make one adjustment at the back of the TV while attempting to keep the camera pointed at the screen just to show you guys the difference. Now, 
I shall reveal what I've done in a second, but keep an eye on the picture, okay? Three, two, one, go. Now, what did I do there? This is so weird and I don't understand what the hell is going on. I believe it's something to do with the SCART adapter. Well, it's blatantly something to do with the adapter, but the way this works confuses the hell out of me. Basically, all I did then was plug in the composite as well as the S-Video into the SCART adapter. So now all four connections are um, plugged in into the adapter. As you can see, that has now pretty much got rid of the effect. Now, if I unplug the S-Video, hold on a second, if I can do this, there we go, unplug the S-Video, and we've got a weird sort of horizontal blur there, as you can see, it looks like composite video. But as far as I'm concerned, when you plug in the S video and the composite is plugged in to eliminate that strange rainbow effect, which I believe is something to do with the pinout, um, that is not as good a quality as S video going directly into the TV, in my opinion, because it is, def it is definitely sharing something from composite. And if I unplug composite again, Hang on a second. There we go. As you can see, looks horrendous. So, very, very bizarre. Yeah, that is basically it, to be perfectly honest. Um, that is that. Now, the plan was to use, let me take a look over here. Where are we? I'm actually, this is a sneaky peek as to some of the things that I'm gonna be using in my living room setup, by the way, guys. I was planning on using multiple S-Video to SCART adapters with SCART splitters and these high quality SCART cables. Um, here's another Nintendo S-Video cable. I'm planning on using that in my living room setup, but if this is gonna be the result, I don't wanna know. Now, I have no idea, I'm gonna do some research and I am making this video before doing any research about it, so I hope it becomes more clear. I hope I can implement this setup, but if not, I believe this could be the final straw and it may just inspire me to purchase an AV receiver because that way I'll be able to get all my HDMI, all my S video straight in, uh, no questions asked. So that is that. So guys, I just got to the end of uh, editing that portion you've just seen. And as you guys know, I had to insert a little clip in the video because I made a little mistake on the website front of things when I was showing the website. Um, but because I just noticed that it mentioned multicolor consoles, I thought I'd try it live in the video rather than leaving a big uh, question unanswered. Now, yes, this is a white system, but it's custom painted. It was originally just a standard charcoal gray uh, PAL console, nothing fancy, no bells, no whistles. Now, this little thing is an interesting gem and something that a lot of people aren't aware exists, but let me just put a few points straight. This is an original PAL N64. This is not a Japanese console, although they did get the same color scheme released in Japan. This is also not to be confused with the fantastic series of N64 consoles. Um, you can tell that it's not fantastic because it has a clear bottom um, versus a blue bottom that matches the blue top. Um, so this was its own thing, released as a Super Mario 64 bundle. I've recently picked up this console and it's, it's the system that I do hope to use in my living room. Uh, the controllers are also different. If we go, oh, just here, I do have a controller. They are uh, clear on the bottom as opposed to full see-through blue. Um, so that website basically just said um, that it doesn't work with coloured N64s or Pokemon Edition N64s. They don't appear to be internally wired for S-Video. Now this tells us something interesting. This does tell us that the the console fully supports S-Video as a dedicated option. That is why you need a proper cable um, to implement it in its full entirety, which is what this entire video has been about. But I want to see if this console, which is not a Fantastic, which is not a Pikachu Edition system, I want to see if it outputs S-Video, because with a little bit of luck inside here, we have a motherboard that is identical to the Charcoal Grey console. If that is not the case, um, I do know that there were motherboard revisions specifically made for the Fantastic series, and there is a slight difference in the picture quality. However, I'm very, very happy if this does not output S-Video, I'm happy to change a board. 
um, with a grey system. So let's take a little look live on camera. Power down this system, take out the game, pop it into this one and we're going to do all of this live just so that I can prove to you guys what we're doing and as you can see this is the four core cable and it's going in S video on the side so let's plug that one into there and I've got a little sneaky feeling that this console is going to output S video I really do um, just because it's I hope it, it's not a fantastic under the hood um, I've never seen it like that anyway, so let's take a look. Come on. I hope that this is good news, guys. I hope that this is a little gem that supports S-Video, just like the charcoal grey system. Off you go. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Going to give the game a little blow. Not recommended, um, but I need to clean all my games properly. Again, not recommended. You are kidding me. You are absolutely kidding me, guys. Okay, let's plug in, let's plug in composite. Composite is plugged in. No signal via S video. Let's unplug S video like that and swap to Composite, let me find composite on the TV. Okay, AV, there we have it. So this system is outputting. Um, I'm gonna leave it powered up and I'm gonna plug the S video back in. I got a feeling that I am in bad luck for this one, folks. I do have a feeling that I'm in bad luck for this one. That's crazy. I'm gonna have to do a motherboard swap. Okay, S video is plugged in. Let's go back to the S video channel. No friggin' way. And just to just to double check the TV and the cable, swap them back. Charcoal grey system that is now white, which is confusing matters even more for you guys as the viewer. Go. Bollocks. Okay, so I have learned today, guys, that although this console is not a fantastic series console or a Pokemon series console, it does not output S video. And I love learning new facts about my favorite game system, the Nintendo 64. So together we have found out something very interesting. Um, Holy crap, that is crazy. I really hope it supports Ultra HDMI because I want to get that mod done as soon as it becomes available. Um, but if not, the motherboard is coming out of this guy or a similar charcoal one. If I can find a really beat up charcoal console and whip the motherboard out of it and pop it in there, that would be fantastic. Holy crap, guys. I think that pretty much ends the saga um, for tonight. It is late. It is a random Wednesday night. I really need to... Um, you know, get some other things done, but yeah, uh, we've just learned that together, so, oh my gosh, um, wow, interesting, do you know what, this is wild, this is wild, okay guys, thank you very, very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and as always, I will see you in the next video.